In the last lesson, we saw parabolas that were centered uh, with their vertex right at the origin, which was nice and convenient, but it's not realistic. So in this lesson, we look at parabolas that are in the form ax squared plus c, where they've been shifted. Now, you might already think you know what the, what the plus c value does, because it does similar things to linear equations, but let's graph um, and just make sure that you understand what happens. Again, you also want to be careful of your order of operations, so let's talk through the first one together. So I have y equals x squared minus 2, so I'm going to plug in the values, and I've given you these values, and they're really good values to pick because they keep the numbers nice and small. If you pick larger numbers, when you go to square it, it gets even larger than that, and so sometimes your points are not able to be put on the graph paper. So in order to make sure that you have a nice visible u, you want to make, keep your numbers nice and tight. So let's plug in negative 2. When I plug in negative 2, that's negative 2 squared, which is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 1 squared is 1. Minus 2 is negative 1 and 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. And you should see the symmetry happening. We talked about the symmetry when we did our V-shaped absolute value graphs. So here's our vertex, 0, negative 2, and then you should see that symmetry happening in the table around the vertex. And so you can also check your table if it makes sense by looking for that. So let's plot our points, negative 2, 2. negative 1, negative 1, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 1, and 2, negative, or 2, 2. Connect them, make a nice U shape, and we have to make sure that we label, so Y equals X squared minus 2. How does this graph compare to Y equals X squared? Well, if you want, you can put y equals x squared on the graph. You don't have to. I'm going to do it just so you can see. But it would look like, uh, like this. And I'm just going to sketch it because we don't really need it. Um, but it would look just like this, only shifted down too. So um, let's put that as our answer. It is shifted down to compared to y equals x squared. One thing that some students will think is that the graph is wider because it goes around the y equals x squared graph, but it's actually not. The only reason it goes around is because it's going through different points, uh, but they, it, it's the same width of the original graph, only shifted down. Why don't you pause the video and try letter B on your own? All right, so it shifted up three, and you can see that from having plus three in the equation. And again, it's not narrower, it's only shifted up. They are the same width. And the reason that we know that they're the same width is because they both have an A value of one, which is what we learned about in the last lesson. So their width is the same. All right, in this one, we're going to combine the two things uh, that we've learned so far. We're going to have an A value and incorporate a C value. So we're going to not only change the width, but also change the shift. So let's do letter A together. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. Negative 1 squared is 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. That gives me 4 times 0, which is 0 plus 1. Uh, 1 squared is 1. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And then this should be 17, and I'm just going to shortcut because I know that I start to see the symmetry, and I should get 17. So let's graph. And I can tell that I'm going to run out of space because if you look at the grid, it doesn't go up to 17. So I'm going to shift the axis down. So with me, just shift that y-axis down, and we'll ignore the one that's printed, and let's make that the x-axis, and I'll just darken the y-axis right here. And that way, all the points will be on the 
graph. So negative 2, 17. Then we've got negative 1, 5. 0, 1. 1, 5. And 2, 17. Now this one is super narrow because of that 4 coefficient. So you just do your best to make the best U that you can. Label it. And we have to compare. Um, so it's narrower. And shifted up 1 compared to y equals x squared. Pause the video and do letter B on your own. All right, let's wrap this up and talk about what the value of C does to a graph. I know we've talked about it, but let's just summarize it all together. When the value of C is positive, the graph shifts up. And when the value of C is negative, the graph shifts down. For this example, it's important to know where you're starting from and where you're going to because the shift will change depending on your starting parabola. So we want to know which is, is true when you translate this graph, y equals x squared minus 5, to the graph y equals x squared plus 2. So we're starting with a graph that's 5 units below, and we're going to a graph that's 2 units above. So what would that shift be? Would it be 7 units up or 7 units down? Since you're starting 5 below and going to 2 above, it's 7 units. The graph shifts 7 units up. If you notice choice C, that would be the reverse, which is why it's very important to know which graph you're starting with. Last chapter, we looked at equations where we set them equal to zero. What we're actually doing is we're finding these things called zeros. A zero of a function is the x value for which f of x equals zero. A zero, another word for the zero is the x-intercept. Sometimes we also call these roots. So if you uh, hear that phrase, it means the same thing. So these are all words that you might hear that mean the same thing. All right, let's look at this real life application of a parabola. This function right here gives the approximate height in feet of a falling object t seconds after it is dropped from an initial height. An egg is dropped from a height of 64 feet. When does the egg hit the ground? So let's make a table because we don't know the values and they give us a grid over on the side, so we should probably graph it. So I've got uh, values of t and I've got values of f of t. So obviously I can't have negative time, so I'm going to start when time is zero. And my equation, since we go and we're plugging in 64 in for s is zero, uh, the equation is f of x equals negative 16t squared plus 64. That would be the formula that would represent the height of this egg. So now I go and plug it in. So when t is zero, you get negative 16 times zero plus 64 and that is 64. Then I plug in 1, and that's negative 16 times 1 plus 64, 48. And I plug in 2, that's negative 16 times 4, because I have to do 2 squared, negative 16 times 4 plus 64, and that gives me 0 when you plug it in. I'm not going to go further because you can't have negative feet, so I'm going to stop. So now I'm going to go to the grid and make a table or an xy axis. And it doesn't make sense for me to be negative for the same reason that I didn't make my table negative. So I've got t and I've got f of t. If you put y and x, you're not technically wrong, but you should use the variables in the question. So I have to figure out what my scale is. So it looks like I could maybe go by 8s. 16, 24, 32, 48, 56, 
64. Perfect. So that lands me right there. So now I plot my points. So 0, 64 is here. Then I've got 148 and 2, 0. I'm not going to use arrow tips because I'm not going into the negatives and I have to uh, write the formula. So f of t equals negative 16t squared plus 64. One point of clarification before we answer the question, this does not represent the path of the egg. It's not going in a curving path. It's going straight down. This represents the height at any given moment in time. So now let's answer the question. The question asks, when does the egg hit the ground? So the egg hits the ground right here uh, at the zero, at the x-intercept. Uh, so that is a time of two. So two seconds is the moment when the egg hits the ground. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.